In fifth position after the first run was Freddie Newberg of Sweden. With an opportunity, providing he could put it all together, of really putting the pressure on the four remaining races to come. Newberg had a flying start and cut an excellent racing line through the pattern of control gates. And at the early intermediate time, he's all, he was already 0.69 ahead of his nearest rivals. 1994 in Aspen, the last time he won a World Cup giant stardom. He's had seconds and thirds since then, but the win has eluded him for a couple of seasons. Could this possibly be the day when Freddie Newberg will get back into his winning ways? Swedish Alpine skiing enjoying a purple patch with the antics of Newberg and Patrick Yerbin and on the Women's World Cup with Christina Anderson and more notably Camilla Wieberg. And Newberg beginning now to ski at his very best. An excellent second run time and a healthy advantage of 0.34 for the Swede. For him now, a matter of watching the last four men down the mountain. And the next one of those was Steve Loescher, already a winner in World Cup. He set out to try and challenge the time of his Swedish rival. Flat section at the top of the Cimarron Hill. A chance for the racers to build up speed, but as well as using that speed when they come into the more technical sections, they need to control it as well. Loescher, on one or two occasions, was unable to do that. And let his skis slip uncharacteristically wide. One win already for Steve Loescher. That was in Solden in round one. And here in round three, a disappointing result for him. Sixth at that stage, eventually ninth. And Newberg saw off one of his main rivals. Another one of them appeared almost immediately. His name, Hans Knaus. Now skiing in the USA, where his brother Bernard is better known than him. Bernard Knaus has been four times the US pro skiing champion. And he's one of the few men in the world to have won more than a million dollars from the sport. It began well for Knaus, the right side of the clock by point one two. Freddie Newberg watching on at the bottom as Knaus took advantage of a brief, clear moment in the weather where. He had good visibility from top to bottom on the Cimarron Hill. But a little bit of caution coming towards the final few turns, and Klaus's chance seemed to be slipping away. 0.65 now, the deficit. And little chance for him to find that sort of time with just half a dozen turns to go. Good smooth skiing from the Austrian, and we'll look forward to better things from him as the season progresses. Klaus had to settle for third eventually in Breckenridge. Newberg had to sweat it out for just two more races. And the first of those was the leader in the World Cup overall standings, Shetil Andre Ormot, fellow Scandinavian, and really the leader of the attacking Vikings this season. Ormot, the fully rounded skier, capable of winning this season in downhill, Super G, GS and slalom. Change of equipment to the Kessley skis this year has certainly given him a new lease of life. And despite a couple of errors, he was right in the thick of things. And then the errors came more and more. A little bit of nerves from Ormot. And the time difference between he and Freddie Newberg was greater than he would have liked. 2.11.83 was untroubled by the Norwegian. Fourth at that stage. We had to wait to see if it was fourth where he'd remain. And then there was one man to go. Urs Kaley of Switzerland. Wearing his familiar hat, never skis in a crash helmet. Strange decision that when you imagine that he's travelling at full speed every time he attacks a giant slalom course. But Kaley prefers it that way and didn't seem to be affecting his confidence at the top. Went 6-0 in his favour. Newberg at this stage must have been thinking that his chance of a win had disappeared as Kaling began to really turn on the pressure halfway through the course. But as so often is the case, ski races can be decided in 
a split second. One little mistake can cost it, and that's what happened to Urs Kaden. A little slip, a little wide, and his advantage had turned into a deficit of 0.20. Newberg sat at the bottom of the course, fingers crossed, toes crossed, legs crossed, waiting to see if this would be his day in Breckenridge, and it was. 0.16, Kalin was outside the required time, and Freddie Newberg was immediately congratulated by Jean-Pierre Barallo from the Salomon squad. Their first win in giant slalom for the men. Confirmation of that, Newberg, Kalin, Knaus, Christian Meyer, and Shetil Ormott in fifth. Von Grunigen, Lassie Schuss in sixth and seventh, then Holzer and Steve Loescher in ninth, and Yuri Kajir suffering a little bit with nerves down.